Chief Minister, as you know, the Leader of the Opposition has called for a meeting with you ahead of any constitutional reform committee being set up. Are you going to invite him to this meeting? I think it's quite remarkable that Mr. Fizam should have taken this attitude. Let's go back and look at how historically our, our predecessors, and he calls Mr. Kavana a colossus of Gibraltar politics in your interview last night, I think, or in, in today's uh, Chronicle, uh, how Mr. Kavana handled it. Uh, there was no private meeting between Joe Bosano and Peter Cavani in the run-up to the establishment of the Select Committee for the eventual 2006 uh, Constitution. Uh, and Mr. Fidham says that uh, democratically it would not be right if the Chief Minister of Gibraltar and the, the leader of the opposition did not meet privately, in effect, uh, in, a, in a room where we don't allow the rest of the people of Gibraltar to see what it is that we're talking about before we launch uh, a Constitutional Select Committee. Well, look, I could not disagree more. For two reasons. First of all, on page 18 of the GSLP Liberal Manifesto, there is a commitment to convene a select committee of the Parliament for this purpose. That is therefore the choice of more than two-thirds, more than two-thirds of the people who voted at the last general election. In other words, that there should be such a select committee. And second, because I don't believe in doing things behind closed doors and without allowing the rest of the people of Gibraltar to know exactly what it is that the Chief Minister and the Leader of the Opposition may be considering the future, the constitutional future of Gibraltar should be. That's why I, I believe that this important matter should be dealt with in the context of the heart of our democracy, our parliament, with a select committee that looks together, I'm not suggesting that we should be at odds on this, looks together at where it is our constitution should be going to review that document which is now 10 years old. Nevertheless, Mr. Feetham seems to make it almost a precondition that he should have this meeting with you or with members of the government. Why not just agree to it? At the end of the day, it can't cause any harm and it'll keep him happy. Well, I don't meet people who decide that they want to give interviews to the media making meetings with me a precondition uh, to anything. If Daniel genuinely thought that this was something that had to happen, he would have picked up the phone and suggested a meeting. He hasn't done that. He's gone on the airwaves. This is clearly just a, another political manoeuvre, another political contradiction a la Daniel Feetham. Look, I'll give you an example. One of the things Mr Feetham repeatedly says is that we need to be considering every potential eventuality that Brexit may mean the befalls Gibraltar. I, I agree with him and we're doing a lot of thinking and a lot of planning in that respect and when it's possible we'll even meet with him to share some of the information and do some thinking so that we can best be prepared in the context of what might happen after a, a referendum on the UK's membership of the European Union. And yet Mr Feetham also says in direct contradiction to that position that we shouldn't consider what if any constitutional development there might or should be until after there has been a vote on respect to whether the United Kingdom should stay within the European Union or exit. Well, look, those are two completely contradictory things. Surely one of the things we need to be planning for, considering and reviewing is what our constitutional relationship with the United Kingdom might be if the United Kingdom leaves the European Union, should we be closer? Or should we be less close to the United Kingdom? Look, I think all people will think that we probably need to be closer to the UK. But these things need to be considered in good time. For the avoidance of any doubt, there's no question of this meeting that Mr. Fitam would like to take place actually taking place ahead of the creation of a committee. No, look, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to do that which the people of Gibraltar have sought that I do, which is what I've committed myself to do in a manifesto in which I fought a general election. You know, I, I worked very hard on that manifesto, perhaps quite unlike others, produced a document that's very detailed. It's the choice of more than two thirds of the people of Gibraltar. And I'm going to act in keeping with the will of the people of Gibraltar by taking to Parliament a resolution to create a select committee. I sincerely hope that this is something on which we can work together. Look, the last time that there was a review of the Constitution, it involved a select committee, it involved the thinking of that select committee, and it involved also a team of people outside of the parliament that joined with those who had been part of the select committee. That's how I see this process uh, uh, becoming a reality. I think that's the right way to do it. I think uh, Mr. Fitam on reflection would probably want to form part of that select committee. It's not a select committee where I'm proposing to impose my will. I'm literally saying, let us together look at what changes it may be that we want the constitution to have. Mr. Fitam also said that as far as he was concerned, this was the, the best constitution we could have. 
have that it achieved that modern relationship short of short of um, independence. independence. Well, look, I'm not looking for independence or anything near independence I, and for one moment, and I want to be very clear about that because Pasadena was trying to pretend that I might for some reason be trying to set Gibraltar on the road to independence. Far from it. I'm not seeking to set Gibraltar on the road to independence. I'm not seeking independence or anything related to independence. But let us just look at the result of the Select Committee of 2004, 2005. They who left Gibraltar to negotiate, led by Mr. Caruana, supported by Joe Bosano, Adolfo Canapa, Mr. Fita was also part of that team, they did not come back to Gibraltar with everything that the Select Committee wished should be the new constitution for Gibraltar. So there are certainly, even according to Mr. Fitam, who supported that negotiation at that time, steps that could be taken to achieve that which the select committee before had wanted to achieve and which were not achieved in the negotiation in the context of the first half of, of the 2000 decade. Now, look, those are things which are still things we may wish to pursue. And there are other things which have come out in the wash, not just in my time as chief minister now, uh, five years of, of the 10 that we're dealing with, but also in Peter Cavana's time in those first five years. Changes that are glitches that were not envisaged at the time the constitution was negotiated, etc. Those are the things that we're talking about. And you know, I know that Daniel has talked about potentially being able to chip at some issues. I talked some time ago about salami slicing some steps further, which might be important for Gibraltar. Those are the issues to consider together, but openly in Parliament, not behind closed doors. That's not the way we should be doing things if we truly do believe in transparency and accountability, as we certainly do. And if Mr. Fitam feels that the GSD can't participate in this committee because he doesn't have this meeting with you that he's seeking, what then? Will you still constitute the committee even if it's just with members of the government? It's a hypothetical question. Mr. Fitam yesterday refused to be drawn by you into saying that he would not form part of the select committee if I didn't give him uh, a meeting uh, before doing so, before proposing that. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, drawn into answering a hypothetical question. I sincerely believe that in the interest of the people of Gibraltar, we're able to work together on this very important issue, which is our further constitutional development and this constitutional review that might indicate what, if anything, we should be doing to look forward and uh, to produce the next step in our constitutional evolution. This should not be a partisan issue. This is not for cheap politics.